This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Welcome back everyone. Today we are going to do a little mail time. And for those of you who might be new to this channel, this is the video where I feature works that are sent in by viewers like you. This is actually something that started years ago. And over the years I've made these videos and we've featured like over 300 different zines, books, prints, things that people sent in. And it got to me early on that just in the spirit of creativity, I wanna reward people for making things, which is really important. And there's some really cool stuff that's sent in. I've got some awesome stuff that I wanna share with you today. Uh, but it's something that's really important, I think, and it's something that we've done for a long time, and I've been talking about changing it up, and we're nearing the end of the year, so I wanna talk about that for just a second. So I've had a lot of people ask me about mail time and when it's gonna go away, and I wanna send you something, but it's not quite done, and what's the cutoff date, and look, here's the deal. I have an idea for something that I want to replace this format with. It just needs to grow beyond what it's done, and I think it's just kind of, there's a sameness to it. Uh, having said that, though, it probably will involve mail in the future, so, so I'd want to be a little more selective about things. But anyway, all that to say, if you have something you want to send in, don't let this stop you. It probably won't stop just right away. There's no hard deadline or anything. But anyway, having said that, I don't want to diss on mail time, but uh, let's get to some mail time because I really do have some cool things that I want to share with you guys today. So first up is this awesome book, which comes to us from Jeff Karp. This is called Invisibility. I love the cover. This is a book that deals with photographs of unseen weather. Jeff also included a note which reads, Dear Ted, I'm Jeff Karp, a photographer from Minneapolis, Minnesota. I absolutely love your YouTube channel and have been a voracious consumer of your videos for many years now. This book you hold in your hands is called Invisibility, a series of photographs showcasing all kinds of weather hidden in plain sight. This book, a fun, creative departure from my usual focus on light and shadow street photography, includes moments captured in Minnesota and other places that I've visited over the last six years. Your mail time videos were especially helpful and instructive to me as I worked to put Invisibly Together between November 22 and February 2023. I often found myself thinking, what would Ted do in this situation as I worked through the steps of the book layout, sequencing captions, and cover design? Your mail time videos and the constructive critiques that you share have been a constant source of knowledge, inspiration, and encouragement for me in my various creative pursuits. I am sure the same holds true for many others in your art of photography community. Thanks so much for all what you do. Warmly, Jeff. Okay, so Jeff, really nicely done. I wanna talk about a few things that strike me in this book that we can share with others. I think one of the things that I love about this so much is first of all, it's a great concept, whether that's hidden in plain sight and how you address that. I also love the fact that that you deal with that mainly through this wonderful contrast of abstract images and more realistic images. And it's got a really nice flow to it, a really nice mix. I really like the way that you handle abstraction in these. The color is outstanding, and I think one of the reasons this works so well is that you have a nice balance in here. I love the spread of the uh, windows with the jet plane flying over. Just a few constructive comments on your book. I think this is really well done, though. First off, I want people to take note of the cover. I think this is really cool and really well done. Photography books are really difficult to do when you get to the cover design. It's like, okay, well, I do I just include an image of something on the inside or can there be a graphic? And I love books that don't have a photograph. And I don't know why, but I've always been like that. You know, the famous Henri Cartier-Bresson book, The Decisive Moment, has a Matisse illustration on the front. And so I love that contrast and that juxtaposition of having the unexpected inside after something else is based on the front. Anyway, I'm not really sure why I like that, uh, but it's something I haven't really thought through, but I really love it on your book. I think this is awesome. Uh, the other comment that I want to make is on the interior pages. So Jeff, you have a lot of labeling going on in here, and I don't mind it. I think the typography is well done. I think the size and relationship to the pictures is well done. I don't think that they compete with one another. The only thing I would suggest is because this book deals with something that's on a more abstract and even possibly emotional level, at least for me as a viewer, is I think that I really don't need them there at all. And my point is, is that they're all kind of around the Twin Cities area. And so having a location attached to each one, there's not much in the image that is location dependent, if you know what I mean. It's not a tourism book. It's not a uh, uh, something that requires text to describe what's going on. It just happens to be a label of where something is. What I would do in the future on something like this, and it's, it doesn't kill the book to be clear, but uh, what I would do in the future is just have an appendix if you want locations on images or descriptions. I think that would be much better. Um, I think that you have such a strong contrast of images going on in here. It's something that I really like, and I don't want that experience to be 
be tainted by reading something that not is, well, it's not directly related to the images. I hope that makes sense. But otherwise, outstanding job on here. The color is beautifully done. The book is well put together. Really like it, man. You should be proud. Awesome work, Jeff. All right, so next up, I've got two projects that come to us from a gentleman named Rene Amato. First of all, we have a zine called 0101-2022. We also have a book called Low, which deals with lowrider culture. And I wanna talk about these individually because I think they represent a really cool range to what Rene is able to do as a photographer. Let's, let's begin with the zine. So 0101-2022, I'm gonna read a little bit from the front here. And Rene states in here, winter depresses me. The cold, the snow, the dreariness, the shortened days, ugh. But if I were totally honest, I would look forward to the first snowfall of winter, but not only for the purpose of photography and drifting. Once I satisfy those two urges, well, I'm over it. Take it all back and bring me more summer. But this is Wisconsin, and winter lasts five to six months here. It is what it is, I guess. These photos were all shot on January 21st, 2022 in Racine, Wisconsin. The bricks, the snowfall, the slush, the lingering Christmas decorations, the brave and bundled up souls who go out and face the fight with old man winter. It's beautiful to me, but it's only the first time it happens each winter. I'm definitely over it now. Take it all back and bring me summer, Rene. So Rene, your zine is fabulous. I love the concept. I love that this was quick. It was short, it was improvised. It was all done in one day and it has a solid concept around it. It's nicely printed. Outstanding work. This is really well done. And I have this soft spot in photography for kind of these older meets new kinds of situations that you have in smaller towns where from an architectural standpoint, you're seeing a city that has a lot of history to it that's very old. And to see it just opposed in the snow or, you know, something where you're in the Midwest, you're going to have a lot of snow in the winter. This is just really well done. I love it. I, visually, it's amazing. Uh, awesome work. Now, I want to move to the other thing that was sent in by Renee. This is called Low. Renee did include a note which describes this a little bit. Let me read you a little bit about Low. Renee says, Hi Ted, this book Low is the second body of work that I've published. The Low Rider community is one I've been a part of since I was a teen. The photos featured in this book span from my early digital photography days in 2014 to 2020 and were shot in various cities. It also features two poems that were written for this by my friends Eli and Caro who are also part of this community. I'm not sure everyone will understand or agree with how I spread their words across multiple pages, but I feel that combining three forms of art, photography, lowrider culture, and words, together make statements that help provide context and perspective. Both poems can be found in their entirety in the back of the book, so people can also appreciate the words on their own. Hope you enjoy this book. I wanted to create something that was different from other photo books that I've seen and in the style of the cars it features. Thanks for all you are doing for photography, Renee. By the way, Renee includes a note in here if you want to purchase these, and I'll include links to everybody who sends stuff in in the show description below this video, so make sure you check it out and support your fellow photographers. Renee Lowe is outstanding. I love that it's a very different concept. I love the way it's printed. Uh, I love the juxtaposition of the poetry actually on the images. I think it plays with the words in a really nice and beautiful way. And I think that you've got something that's really interesting here. Um, having grown up around low rider culture, obviously this is a topic and a subject that's very familiar to you. And I think that your skills in photography are on par and up to the task. And one of the things that I want to point out because it happens in both books here is that Rene also writes about his images. And I think that's a skill that not everybody has. And it's, it's, it's something that I love when I'm reading a book because it gives me more context around the images that I'm looking at. It helps kind of shape my interpretation of what I'm seeing. Uh, and I think it's really well executed. I love that the design on these books is completely different too. I mean, this shows that Renee has a pretty big range. Uh, we have something that's just a sans serif, uh, Helvetica kind of thing on here that looks very modern, whereas low reflects the community that it's serving here with kind of the graffiti black letter type. And when you see the typography across from page to page, it's really well done. One small point of criticism, Renee, I know that you love a real saturated look to your images, but uh, I would talk to your printer about this, first of all, and talk about profiles and how to get the best look. Overall, I think this is really well printed and it really works, but there's a couple of spreads in here. I'll give you an example is this one here. And I think consistently through the book, it deals in areas where you have saturated blues that deal with darker areas. And I don't know if you can see this in here, but like in particular the steering wheel, uh, we start to lose uh, some stuff. But honestly, that's super nitpicky. I love both of these projects. I will put a link to Renee's work below. Awesome work, Renee. Thank you for sharing. Okay, I've got a couple more projects that I want to share with you guys. I have this little zine called A Fleeting Journey, as well as three monochrome zines. Uh, that are really cool. So I want to talk about these, but real quick, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor today, who are the awesome folks over at Squarespace. How easy is it to build an amazing website in a matter of minutes? 
Squarespace has you covered. It's dead simple. Head over to Squarespace, hit get started. You can start by selecting from an impressive collection of customizable templates, or you can do what I do, build your own. Something unique because, you know, you're not like other websites. Give your site a name. Next, you can build your homepage. We'll start with a few preset layouts just to get us going. Want to sell products like books or prints? Well, you can feature those on your homepage. Create a few more sections if you want. Let's also give it a color palette. There's a whole bunch to choose from. and Just get us started. We can change this all later. Next, let's select the typography choices. Welcome to your website. Everything is set up and it's all ready for you to customize. Squarespace is built on Fluid Engine, the next generation of website design. Select Edit and Fluid Engine allows you to drag, place, and resize any element on the page. You can snap these to a grid. You can make them float on top of one another. You can freeform however you like. You can even preview and adjust how the site looks on either desktop or mobile. The layouts are independent. Of course, you'll want a portfolio for your work. Creating an image gallery is as easy as dropping a folder of images on your web browser. Once uploaded, you can drag to resort, customize the look, and Squarespace writes all of the code for you. Everything just works and it looks fabulous. Want to sell your own prints, books, or zines? Squarespace has the capabilities to not only set up your online store and collect payments, but they also give you all the tools that you're going to need to be successful. Managing shipping and payment options, manage your orders and engage with your customers. They even give you the tax tools that you need to keep things organized and stay compliant. You should try Squarespace for yourself. It's absolutely free, no credit card required. Just go to squarespace.com AOP, sign up for that free trial. If you decide Squarespace is right for you, I can save you an additional 10% on your order by using offer code AOP on checkout. That's right, the code is AOP. So stop procrastinating, go build your website today. And I want to give a special shout out and thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Okay, so next up I've got three zines that are part of an ongoing series from a gentleman named Mark O'Brien. These are three samples from that series. Mark is clearly a fan of analog photography and is an analog kind of guy. I love that he wrote his note on an actual typewriter. Bonus points there, Mark. But Mark's note reads, Dear Ted, I have been watching slash listening to your art of photography for many years. I realized that I should have sent you a copy of Monochrome Mania when I first started this venture anyway. Here's the latest issue featuring images from a camera you probably would have never considered using. I hope that you enjoy the issue. Best wishes, Mark. Mark, I'm going to assume that you're talking about the Ansco Pix Panorama, and my friend, you would be incorrect. I have an Ansco Pix Panorama. I don't know where it is. It is in a box. I bought it years ago, and uh, I'll tell you guys about this camera because it's very funky. I bought mine for probably a dollar at a yard sale when I found it, and I just couldn't pass it up. So it's just kind of a notch up from a toy camera. We'll use the cover here because that's it. It's actually very tiny. It's smaller than a phone, uh, but thick because it's a 35 millimeter camera. So in this camera, in fact, he's got some illustrations in the back that might help. Well, there's the back of the camera. So from the actual original Ansco manual, you can kind of see how the camera is put together there and how you load your film and shoot it. The Ansco Pix Panorama is not really a panoramic camera. It does have a wide angle lens on the front. And what it does is it simply uses masks to mask out part of the negative. So you end up with only a visually very long panoramic image, but it is a lot of fun to use. And as you can see in his photos in here, it has a real funky look to it because it is very lo-fi. First of all, we're talking about 35 millimeter as a format, which is pretty small. And then we're only using a portion of that. So it becomes even smaller. So anytime you shoot black and white film or you shoot in low light or even push uh, your exposures, you're gonna get a lot of grain to your images. And the lens itself is super funky too. It's just a piece of plastic, one element meniscus, and you get kind of a Holga effect, but it has its own flavor as you can see in these images and it's a really fun and cool camera to use. This one thing that I actually love about uh, the work that Mark sent in here is that each one of these has a different flavor to it. Uh, the second zine that he sent in is this one uh, which is called Pocketing Memories and this one is images that were all done on iPhones and there's a variety of different styles. The images in here run the gamut uh, between landscape images, uh, the formats change between square, sometimes they are rectangular. Uh, and it was, it's really cool. The other part that I really like in 
here uh, is the urban landscapes as well as the aerial shots. And what's really cool is, uh, you know, we've all sat there in the airplane and taken shots out the window, but the context with they're put into here and the fact that it's all monochrome, it just gives it a different look. It's kind of like a manual drone, so to speak. Uh, anyway, I really love this. The other book is called Among the Trees, and it also deals with analog photography on various cameras. Uh, I think, Mark, that you're doing some awesome work on these, and thank you for sending these in. Um, again, I would check these out if you guys are interested. Uh, I don't know how often Monochrome Mania is produced here. It looks like it's every couple months because we've got issue, or issue number nine. Number 10 comes in March, three months later in July. Anyway, so uh, awesome work, Mark. Thank you for sharing. Next up is another analog photography project. This is called A Fleeting Journey, which comes to us from Akil Grubb. It is a limited edition. I am the proud recipient of 100 of 100. Kind of cool. Akil also included a nice postcard in here, which reads, Ted, before anything else, I hope all is well. Your channel has taught me a lot since I started photography in 2019. Enclosed is a photo book documenting my first time visiting Japan with my two friends, Ichiro and Shinpei. I visited their grandmother slash dad's hometown. We went to Osaka, Kyoto and Tokyo. This book documents our journey roughly in order of what we saw. This is my first photo book, so I'd love your honest thoughts and feedback on how to improve. Oh, and it was shot on film. Cameras Mamiya 6, Contax T2, a Contax G1, Akil from Brooklyn. So Akil, I love this book. I really love how color is rendered throughout, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that it was shot on film, and you really bring out a lot of that look in each one of these images. Uh, the other thing that I love about it is I don't think this book is trying to pretend to be anything that's not, which is a document of you and your friend's experience uh, traveling across Japan. I love that it's a series of people in front of landscapes, people in front of monuments. I assume this is the grandmother's house. Uh, there's some really cool stuff in here, and I think it's really well done. I would keep up the good work on this. Uh, the thing that I really love about it is how you dealt with the cover. So the cover and the back cover here are both umbrella shots, and they're full bleed images that are just a crop of some of the images that he had, but it has a really nice feel to it. The typography is really well done in here. Akil, you've got a great design sense, and I would just say keep it up. The only thing that I would suggest to, if you wanted to improve on this is when you do travel journeys like this, um, you know, is try to get into a mindset where there's something you're trying to capture visually that represents the area that you're in without being uh, the shots that you would expect. And I know you've only been shooting since 2019, but, you know, if you're shooting landscapes or your friends or stuff like that, those are great. Um, they tend to be things that we would expect from any photo book. But what is something where you could go into something where you're doing geometrical studies or you're doing something uh, where you're relating to landscape to architecture, which is really awesome to do in a place like Japan. Um, something like that that would make it just a little more significant of your experience, and I know that's a little more conceptual, but, uh, you know, if you've only been shout shooting for a couple years, uh, shouting, I've only been shouting for a couple years. If I'd only been shooting a couple years, my work did not look anywhere near this good. So you're off to an awesome start, so I would just say keep it up. I also love the fact that, and part of this is just par for the course with all these books, is that people want to print their work. They want to make something. They, they're thinking of their photography uh, in terms of a project and a context, and I love how we had projects where people are writing about what it is that they showing visually. And so those are really cool ways to think about work and it's what makes it more interesting. And so I want to congratulate everybody on sending stuff in. This was a really good batch of, uh, of projects today. So um, anyway, uh, we've got uh, more of these to come towards we get to the end of the year. I will communicate with you guys on where we're going with this format and what we're going to be doing. Uh, but uh, don't let that stop you if you've got stuff to send in. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, later.